When a right triangle with angle theta is scaled to have hypotenuse 1, the leg opposite theta has length sine theta, and the adjacent leg has length cosine theta. So by applying the Pythagorean theorem, we see that for any angle, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. With that in mind, you might want to make a pair of wedding rings, one marked sine squared and one marked cosine squared. Perhaps you'd make a 3D model to play with possible designs. Here we have xy axes, a sine and cosine curve in the background to establish a scale, and the sine squared or cosine squared curve in bold. Can we make this real? One could 3D print these, but that would be too easy. Here's how they look unrolled. Their lengths are calculated, of course, by multiplying the desired finger diameter by pi. I'll start with a piece of sheet silver and paint it with some black nail polish. That's a kind of lacquer that can protect the silver from being etched. We'll let that dry, give it a second coat so it's well protected, and dry it again. Now I've set up a little jig in this laser cutter to position it repeatedly. We'll burn away the nail polish to leave the metal exposed where we want to etch the curves, axes, and text. This laser isn't powerful enough to affect the metal. In fact, silver makes an excellent mirror, so the laser just bounces off. But you can see why I chose black nail polish. It absorbs the laser really well. It's blasted away, leaving the metal exposed. Now I'm mixing some ferric nitrate with water. This is dangerous stuff, very corrosive. Don't try this unless you understand the risks. The nitrate ion and the solution are like nitric acid. They prefer to be with the silver than the iron ions, so they react to make silver nitrate, which remains in solution. I'm putting it face down so any iron that precipitates can fall to the bottom instead of remaining and clogging up the silver. This will need to sit and work for a while. It's been 15 minutes, let's check on it. Hmm, we'll give it more time. Okay, it's been three hours. I've rinsed it off and can now wash off the nail polish in acetone to clean it up. The etching looks okay. I'll give it another light coat of nail polish. Back in the laser cutter, I'm marking the rectangular boundaries of the two rings. First, I'll cut the two bands apart. I know there are better ways to do this, but I don't have a shear handy, and my bandsaw is set up right here, so I'll just use it. Now I'm going to trim down to the lines with the sander. Again, there are better ways, but this is fast and easy. You can probably tell I'm more of a woodworker than a silversmith. Remove the nail polish with acetone. I'll smooth the edges and clean it up, doing as much work as I can while the rings are still flat. Now it's time to round them into circles using some laser cut wooden forms. Start with a large diameter, then work down to a smaller size. And I bought this nice steel cone thingy to help for making them very circular. Pliers help at the very ends. I put duct tape on the jaws to avoid marring the metal. I have to pound on the silver a while to get them nice and round. And sand inside the joint to make sure it's clean and square. Now open it up to apply a bit of silver solder inside the joint. This brand comes with a flux built in, so I don't need to apply flux separately. The most fun part is heating it up with a butane torch. It has to get red hot to melt the silver solder. Then drop it into water to cool it and anneal the metal. And now the same thing for the second ring. This black oxide comes off easily, but I'm pickling them in vinegar for a few minutes. The acetic acid helps remove the flux. And it's organic, so it's healthy. Now, clean them up with very fine sandpaper and steel wool and then polish them with paper of progressively finer grits all the way down to one micron. And voila, sine squared plus cosine squared rings. As you can see, now we are one.